This is the new AMG GT XX, and it's a pretty amazing thing. It's a concept car with loads of groundbreaking motor, battery, and other technology. However, it will spawn a road car that will replace the AMG GT four-door. So basically, this is gonna be AMG's version of the Porsche Taycan. This is actually AMG's most aerodynamic car. It's even more aerodynamic than the Formula One-inspired AMG one. Oh, this is also faster than that car too. There's also a race car theme here on the inside, even though it's a four seater plus it's packed full of innovative new materials which i'll tell you more about a little later on and i'll also give you a clue about what this car may sound like i'm matt watson and you're watching car wow When I first saw this car, I thought it reminds me of something. What is it? And kind of from the front, I was getting like Ferrari vibes from the mid 60s, but it's not that at all, is it? It's the Mercedes C111. The C111 is a very important car in Mercedes history. 16 of these models were built in the 60s and 70s to test all sorts of new technologies, including rotary engines, turbo diesels, and anti-lock brakes. One car also had streamlined bodywork that helped it set a new top speed record of 250 miles an hour way back in 1979. But the C111 also holds another record. It's the only Mercedes that ever came with pop-up headlamps. Anyway, let's get back to this new AMG. Now, obviously it doesn't have that car's like poppy up headlamps, but it does have some very interesting headlamps. They're quite thin for a modern car, but there's some really interesting technology on those, which I'll tell you more about later. But actually, when you look at it, you can see it's an AMG. I mean, it's got a classic AMG grille. It's very, very wide. It's kind of like slanted backwards. It's got like a sharp mouth look to it. And you've got vertical slats, which actually match up to these vertical slats in the bonnet because you've got cooling that comes through the front of the car and exits here. Love the paintwork. It's called Sunset Beam Orange. It really pops. Yeah, this car has presence. Down the side, there's a lot of focus on aerodynamics. So if you look at these wheels here, they've got an innovative design where you've got motor in here, which can actually shut these vents. So you can have these vents open for cooling the brakes, but then when you need maximum aero efficiency, they will shut like that. Here you see you've got your AMG logo there with some carbon fiber. The door mirrors are really tiny as well, once again, to reduce drag. Though, um, yeah, you're not gonna be able to see too much in those. And I think rear visibility on this car could be a bit of a problem. These side cells are designed to smooth the airflow down the side of the car. You have poppy door handles see if we can make them go in can we make the door handles go in i always struggle with mercedes poppy outy door handles i can never operate them anyway uh, it's not a first for me you can see that this is actually a four-door car so you can get into the back seats there more on that later moving to the back you've got some really like aggressive looking haunches and a very sloping roof line so this car doesn't have a rear wing instead it uses venturi tunnels underneath the car to create downforce and improve aerodynamics these work by using the car's underbody like a massive upside down wing which uses is the air flowing underneath the chassis to suck the car down onto the road, just like on a Formula One car. This produces a lot less drag than traditional spoilers and wings, which helps the car reach a higher top speed while still being able to corner quickly. So the drag coefficient of this car is 0.1 98cd which is better than that of the tesla model s which is 0 0.208 and that's the most aerodynamic production car on sale at the moment now why is aero efficiency so important well at 186 miles an hour 83 percent of the car's energy is used to overcome drag and this car can go a lot quicker than 186 miles an hour here at the back you'll notice there is no rear window if you're wondering what that is no it's not a hatch for the boot and no it's not a spoiler that pops up instead it's an air brake that pops up moving down here you'll notice the round tail lights there which sort of look a little bit like the afterburners on a jet engine and then you've got this panel here which is made up of 700 individual leds and it can display various messages and images you can't program your own to say rude things to the person behind you they will be pre-selected by AMG. Lower down, you've got a rear diffuser. It's very intricate. This is carbon fiber, all aimed at improving the aerodynamics of this car. So the door handles have just shut, so you can see it flush. Let's try and open them. It was operator error. There's a lot going on here in the interior. It's very, very interesting. So there's a big motor sporty vibe, like with the ambient lighting here. Obviously, the steering wheel is inspired by the AMG One. You've got these two big screens, and this main infotainment screen is angled towards the driver. It's actually running a loop of graphics, so we can't configure it. On here, there's some shift lights. Why would you need shift lights? And we've got paddles here, which say up and down. Hmm. Officially, these lights show you the battery's state of charge, and the paddles are to control the strength of the regen effect under braking but i think there's something else going on too 
IMG going to do like step gear changes like you get in the Hyundai Ionic 5N? Well, if you listen to the music again, which we played at the intro of this video, you could hear the noise that the car can make. And that seems to have gear shifts in it. So it looks like you're gonna have that kind of synthetic gear changes, which will be good. Now we'll come to how people are gonna hear the noise in a moment, but let's continue with this interior because if you look down here, you can see that there's this bright orange, illuminous LED strip. That's not actually <laughs> because it's an electrical wire. It's just, it's homage to an electrical wire, the stuff that's running underneath. Then there's the dash design, which has this like kind of shrink wrap coating that you see on MG engines. Actually, there's a cross member that runs inside that which is part of the structure of the car then there's the seats they're made out of carbon fiber and you can get special 3d printed body hugging foam seats which you use an app to scan your body and amg will make them to fit you perfectly this is even more high tech than the way the custom seats are made for formula one drivers they typically sit on top of massive bags filled with foam during their seat fittings engineers then use this as a template to produce carbon fiber seats with the exact shape required amg has simplified this whole process to make it quicker and probably a lot less expensive but this isn't the only clever tech on display in the GT XX's cabin. Then we come to the materials themselves so they're all biodegradable so this feels like leather but it's not actually leather it's made by protein and yeah, it's weaved into this leather material but they use a proper tanning process light for leather so that when you smell it it smells like leather as well as feels like leather they make the suede material in the same way too. Also the door pulls which are like that in a a racing car they're made from protein with the help of bacteria to create this weave once again fully biodegradable and then there's the roof so there's no roof lining just bare carbon fiber it is a very special car now you look into the back and you'll see that there's some rear seats once again they're very racing designed and they're actually molded into the rear bulkhead there's a bar going across which these harnesses are attached to obviously you'd be able to remove that bar if you want to get the rear passengers and looks like there is some knee room it's not loads but it looks reasonable enough i don't know what the actual production car will look like i doubt it's going to have that bar for the harnesses but there's a good chance that that will be how they implement the rear seats in the car. Very interesting. Obviously, to create fake engine noises inside the car is easy. You just use the stereo. However, here at the back, you have a sound bar which will give an exhaust noise to people on the outside. But that's not all. There's also speakers integrated into the headlights which can actually make a noise to warn pedestrians when the car is approaching. But also, it could be used to produce an induction noise so that when you hear the car approaching, it has that proper AMG sound. And based on what I've heard here today, I can already tell you it'll be more convincing than the sounds you get in something like a Kia EV6 GT or the Hyundai Ionic 5N. The car is powered by three motors. There's one at the front and two at the rear, but there's something very special about the motors themselves. They're called axial flux motors, and they're already being used on the Koenigsegg Regera and Ferrari 296 hybrids. This is because they're much lighter than the traditional radial flux motors in conventional electric cars. The reason for this is that the magnetic fields in axial flux motors flow in a different direction, which helps them produce more power and torque in a much smaller, lighter package. For example, the conventional motors in a Porsche Taycan can measure between 16 and 21 centimeters wide. The new axial flux motors in this AMG are just 10 centimeters across, but they actually produce more power. The combined power output of this car is one megawatt, which sounds really cool. Translates to 1,360 horsepower, in case you're wondering. That enables this car to hit a top speed of 224 miles an hour. The AMG One can only do a mere 219 miles an hour, and that's got a Formula One engine. But what about the 0 to 60 time? Well, Mercedes hasn't released any information on this yet but all the signs point to this being the quickest car AMG has ever made and by a long way it should easily out accelerate the AMG GT four-door hybrid which can sprint from 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds and because it's lighter and more powerful than a Porsche Taycan Turbo GT even with the Visac pack it should also beat that car's 2.2 second 0 to 60 time in fact I expect this car to break the two second barrier and out drag the Tesla Model S Plaid in its claimed sub two second 0 to 60 mile an hour time but that's not the only thing that's quick about this new GT XX because it's also capable of charging at up to 850 kilowatts using DC fast chargers. That's more than twice as quick as a Tesla Model S Plaid can recharge using the latest fourth generation Tesla superchargers. This is all possible thanks to a special battery that uses liquid cooled cells like the one in the AMG One and GT four door hybrid to dissipate the extreme heat produced by high voltage charging. What this means is this car can actually charge from 20 to 80% full in just five minutes if you find an 850 kilowatt charger. 
you probably won't find one, but if you could, it would do that. I mean, imagine being able to add like 250 miles of range in just five minutes. And you can see how much charge you've got here by this illumination graphic. They might be thinking, oh, they've got big LED panels under here. But actually, no, this isn't panels. This is paint. This is actual paint. It's paint that can illuminate. Don't believe me? I'm gonna show you. So here's another piece of that side panel, right? So I'm gonna turn it on here with the switch. It's gonna illuminate. But if you look around it, you'll see it's just a normal plastic panel. There's no lights behind it. This, this is paint. Believe me, it is paint. It's madness. So what does this car actually mean in terms of a road game version replacement for the AMG GT four door? Well, I think you're gonna get the battery tech, you're gonna get the motor tech. You might even on the very top of the range version get the same power output as this. Design wise, it's gonna be very similar, but a little bit toned down. Maybe some bigger door mirrors. You'll probably have a back window in the car and you probably won't get that illuminating paint because that could be very expensive to repair. Also on the inside, it's probably a little bit extreme as to what a road game car could have, but the overall design will probably be quite similar. One thing we will get, I'm pretty sure about it is that stepped gear changes because that's why they put it in the audio introduction for this car anyway let me know what you think about this car thanks for watching and i'll see you next time